Our next presentation is Going Live with Streamer, a marketplace for the new data economy. Can you please give Henry Pichkala, CEO of Streamer, a very warm welcome to the stage. I would like everyone to look at their shoes. Go ahead, stare at them for a second and think. They feel personal. You bought those shoes, so you own them. You own the laces, you own the heels of your shoes. But in the near future, will you also own the data produced from them? I'm not kidding, it's real. Take a look. Shoes connected. Regular shoes are so retro now. The hipsters in Williamsburg are putting up the prices as we speak. <laughs> what about the smart car you'll be driving a few years from now? In a smart city, it will need to grab data from its surroundings and deliver the information it produces to others. Who will own the data flowing through your car? Will it be you or a corporation? Right now, we have an entire generation of people who have grown used to the current business model of the internet, generating data for big companies in exchange for seemingly free services. And we've seen in the past few months just how dissatisfied people are with this. They want to be in the driver's seat when it comes to owning and monetizing the information they create. And they are seriously concerned about how much power a tiny number of companies wield by controlling their information. Now, Streamer will help solve that. We are data done differently. We're going to use the power of the blockchain and peer-to-peer -peer networks to turn the current paradigm on its head. And that change starts today. <laughs> Thank you. If people truly want to own their data, legislation won't do that for us. We need a neutral, common space where anybody can turn up and buy and sell the information they are producing. That's what Streamer is building, a marketplace for the 21st century's most valuable asset, data. The marketplace will be for everyone and everything to participate in. People, organizations, machines, and AIs can meet and share all types of real-time information. Whether it's data from your smart car, from finance, social media, IoT sensors, or from the factory floor, Streamer enables you to find an audience and turn that information into genuine value. We're open source, we aim for decentralization, which means that middlemen won't be taking a cut. And that includes ourselves. Let me show you how it works. Play the video, please. So the marketplace showcases the publicly available content on the Streamer network. Anyone can go in, create a product, give it a name and description, and unless it's free, set a price per time unit defined in Streamer data coin or pegged to USD. Then they go and select which of their data streams already st uh, flowing through the Streamer network to include in the product and publish the product onto the marketplace. After this, anyone can go in and buy access to those data streams. Now, <clears throat> buying data is even easier. Users can drill down into a product and buy access to them for any time period that they choose using Streamer data coin. And once the transaction is mined, they can immediately either start building things in our visual editor environment or start receiving that data to their own applications via the Streamer API. Now, under the hood, powering the marketplace 
is the streamer network. It's a scalable off-chain network that operates alongside Ethereum and delivers real-time information from data sources to the correct recipients. Streamer will spend the next year not only onboarding new vendors onto the marketplace, but also creating new ways for people to buy and sell their information. We want to work with big consumer-facing retailers to digitize their products in a way that empowers people, not keeps them trapped as servants for big data corporations. We will keep working towards full decentralization to ensure that the foundations of the data economy remain free from control by monopoly corporations and governments. This is the streamer vision. <laughs> Thank you so much. So shortly, we'll officially launch the marketplace. But let me first tell you about those who share this vision with us. On Thursday, we welcomed our partnership with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, along with others we've already brokered over the past few months. Today, I can reveal two new headline partners who are taking this journey with us, Nokia and OSI Soft. So, <laughs> let me welcome to the stage Richard Beeson from OSI Soft and Marti Ulikoski from Nokia, as well as Jennifer Smith from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Come on, guys. Hi, Brady. Hey, hey, thank you. Hey, everybody. My name is Brady Dale. I'm a reporter for Coindesk. I mostly cover tokens and new startups. And uh, Mr. Bacala invited me up here to talk with their partners about what they're doing with Streamer. So uh, the Streamer idea, we hear about this uh, often in decentralized discussions, uh, give people control of their data again. So we've got Hewlett Packard Enterprise here, Nokia, um, and OSI Soft. Uh, um, so let's give these folks, these are some pretty big companies, a chance to talk about which of their customers they see as most likely to want to put some of their data onto this marketplace. Um, Jennifer, let's start with you. So our partnership with Streamer is, um, has, has kind of come to fruition with uh, an example with car data. Um, we have been able to capture uh, live streaming data from the car system at the edge with our, um, with our edge light infrastructure and to be able to take that, to make decisions around what to put on a chain, what to leave off, and then send that through the marketplace to Streamer. This again, creates that kind of end-to-end -end solution for, um, for market data and creates uh, a place for the data actually to create value versus just like the collection of it. So we're excited to be partnering with them and excited to be able to, to deliver value to customers. And which car brands is uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise working with right now? Which car brands? Yeah. We actually aren't associated with any particular. We have a lot of conversations that we're having with car manufacturers that will, of course, be an integral part in the solution um, is working with them, whether it's car manufacturers or other car entities that can enable the driving system to, to, um, to kind of operate in full circle. And uh, Nokia, um, Marty, I know yeah. you, everyone knows you all as phone makers and telecommunications folks, yeah. but you're doing some interesting work with uh, rural areas that you see yeah. an opportunity here with, right? Yeah, so our project is bringing connectivity to unconnected parts of the rural areas, emerging markets with a self-install model where kind of farmers themselves can set up a base stations. It's easy. We have a plug and play cloud-based management system. And for example, we see that in a farm cases, farmers would anyway put soil, soil measurement devices, weather measurement devices to be able to, able to, be able to have a better crop. And while they have captured that data, why not make it available in data markets and capture a little bit of your investments back? So we're looking forward to this type of an data monetization ecosystem going forwards. So like other farmers around the world could, could learn how to better farm a certain kind of soil if they can get their hands on data about what's worked yeah, in places exactly. where you guys so have. So the obvious use case is that there will be AI or machine learning companies tapping into that these data streams and being able to see that what type of an 
seeds, for example, work in what type of soils and then being able to offer data products. Yeah. And so, and last but not least, we have OSI Soft, uh, maybe a company that isn't as uh, familiar to uh, consumer folks, but is working with, you know, really large factories, really par large enterprise industry players who obviously are generating a ton of data. Um, what's kind of the low hanging fruit for you guys in terms of uh, data that might be interesting for others to get their hands on? Yeah, so our, our customer, we're probably alien to a lot of you. Um, we've been in business for about 38 years, serving um, operations, process industries, government, anybody that has sensors. Um, and these customers, using our Pi system, uh, are managing about o over 1.5 billion streams of data. And these are data-hungry companies. They operate with data. Um, so th the low-hanging fruit here is, is really for them to be able to obtain data from sources that may be outside of their realm, outside of things that they can sense themselves, but also to participate in making that data available um, in, in various scenarios, whether it's regulatory or academic or, or business exchange. And I guess the question that jumps out at me uh, on that is, you know, if I'm running a, a, a big factory that's doing, you know, pretty intense high-end manufacturing, I could, I could imagine some of those companies would be nervous about selling their data because it might reveal, it might reveal too much. Um, is there a solution here? Are people coming around on that? Am I sort of naive on that question? What's the? What's no, no, no. You, you hit it right on the nose. This has uh, been a struggle for a lot of the a lot of our customers when I talk to them, um, because there is a desire in some cases, and actually, uh, there's a thing called benchmarking in in industry where companies uh, want to see how they stack up against uh, their 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 peers. Um, but uh, how, how you make that data available in a, in a secure way, how that gets monetized through the benchmarking company, um, that has been a, a huge process and a huge struggle. I, I see that as one of, of many scenarios where uh, this just uh, lowers the bar to participation. So uh, as long as we're starting to talk about tough stuff, you know, uh, obviously, the Internet of Things, which is a, a big buzzword we've all been hearing about in technology for a while, is relevant here. All these devices are going to generate a lot of data. And in theory, this is going to create a whole new economy of machines paying machines. Um, can any of you guys give us examples of, of those sorts of um, exchanges that might take place that you know the, the streamer platform might make more feasible? I mean... Yeah, great. <laughs> I mean, obviously cars, we can think about cars, actually just, we can pull the data from them and, and share that, but you also think about autonomous driving and cars and machines talking to machines. Um, you know, with, at HP, we, we look at this as, you know, the IoT or blockchain 3.0, so this future element of, of the coming together of IoT and blockchain and big data um, and, and, and being able to make that available uh, to the marketplace through the streamer um, uh, platform, but it's really about you know keeping the control of that data with the owner, or giving that control back, but then also creating a place to generate value with all of this data that we're collecting, and whether that's more seamless communication with car on car, or providing information for um, for governments to be able to improve road conditions, or the weather reports that can, um, or or just um, oil manufacturers or car for safety. So I think there's a lot of different use cases that can be taken from this data, and instead of just collecting it and letting it sit there, we can now create value out of it. And so maybe one comment about the farming use case that um, I personally believe that the single data stream for weather or soil is itself is not very valuable. But I believe that there will be community projects, so there will be data aggregators and these AI and machine learning companies will tap into these uh, data aggregate, aggregated streams because only once you have enough data it is valuable. Mm. It will be interesting to see how the streamer and other data marketplaces are kind of addressing this issue. Yeah, that's exactly the pattern we are trying to create here by eliminating the friction from all these stakeholders working together. It enables the pattern where someone who's developing some kind of model or intelligence or machine mm -hmm. learning, they can actually 
take the raw data from the network or from the marketplace, then apply their intelligence, adding value to the data, and publish the results back onto the marketplace, mm -hmm. right? For the owner of the data or for anyone else, then someone can take that data, apply that to some model, and, and, and put it back onto the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So this can develop uh, or create kind of a, a chain of value adding, a chain of data refinement mm -hmm. that will ultimately um, benefit everyone and give rise to this emerging data ecosystem. Yeah, but it's yeah, impossible yeah, without that kind of frictionless environment where it can be done. Right, sounds good. Yeah, uh, yeah I'd love to add to that because n not only is it, is it lowering the friction, but um, at least with, with, with the customers I deal with, data ownership is absolutely a, a critical issue. And this, this brings in the notion of, of data ownership and, and, and knowing, knowing that it's, it's trusted and knowing that it's where it's coming from and knowing that I can participate in a, in a trusted way. Absolutely critical. Yeah, and I, and I guess it, you know, the, I'm, I'm thinking about this for the Hewlett Packard application in particular with cars, um, but I, it's probably relevant to all these applications. I guess the first question, if you know, I'm a car owner, I'm not, I live in New York City, but uh, if I were, a question that I would have is, you know, will, if I have a car that's in, empowered to put this data out there, will there be a lot of refinement in terms of how much I can control just which chunks of data? Like, could I, just, could I say, you know, share data about the parts on my car, but don't show where I am, for example? Is that, is that a thing you could... Exactly. Yeah, that's ex exactly the type of control that would that you would have in place, and the decisions you'd be able to make, and um, the being able to do that analysis at the edge is is enabling that further um, display of of control and ability to choose which data is shared, which puts the power in the hands of the user. So with uh, with Nokia on stage, I'm always curious about uh, what's going on with uh, the fifth generation of the internet. This new you know, super large streams of data out there. Um, uh, what's going on there, and is, is that, how important is that gonna be to being able to share these sorts of pools of data? Yeah, so obviously 5G is the big thing for the company. So I'm personally working with these emerging markets, uh, kind of area where the price is everything, but the, we have project where we are integrating 5G base station, for example, to street lamps, and those will be kind of a data rich environments where, where all type of an environment or pollution data will be gathered from. So um, as we talk about the Internet of Things, you know, another sort of tricky side of the Internet of Things is the main thing we hear about it so far is, uh, is just big security breaches that keep happening. And it seems like if you incentivize people to put more things on to the Internet, to put more data on the Internet uh, and monetize that, there's some danger that folks might move too quickly and we could see even more of those things get exposed. So. Um, does, does Streamer have a plan in place, uh, or do, do the companies on stage have a plan to sort of ensure that data becomes available, you know, only after security is, is right? I'm sure all of us have, a, have <laughs> yes. a good plan for that. For Streamer, the main thing is obviously the data confidentiality, which can be established via end-to-end -end encryption. So if we encrypt the data as close to the source as possible, then it doesn't matter if the data uh, travels through a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network potentially consisting of untrusted nodes because it will just look like garbage to, to anyone who does not have the decryption key. But we don't go into the kind of uh, sensor or hardware level of things, obviously, that's for these guys. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of security built into the hardware itself. Also, layering on with the Ethereum blockchain um, increases that level of security and trust mechanism. Um, and then, of course, the ability to be able to choose and select the data points that are put on there. No personal information is necessarily has to go on there. It could just be the acceleration and things like that from the car. So I think all of those create an element of secure um, and feasibility for this. Yeah. There will be all types of unintended consequences out of publishing data, so it will be kind of fun to watch out when people publish data that what other people can, even from very small data amounts, be able to deduce amazing things. So I think this is, uh, this is a kind of an issue for the whole data economy. Yeah. Yeah. In our world, we, we have customers that, that deal with a lot of the U.S. critical and world critical infrastructure. And and whether that data even gets out of that world and how it gets out or even how it gets in is, is crucial. 
and the security aspects are absolutely vital to whether they'll participate. All right, so uh, we're here at the final minute. Uh, Henry, I think you wanted to do a, yes. a last so moment here. Please, if you guys would join me for a little launch ceremony here. So please, let's gather behind the big red button, if you will. <laughs> <coughs> the big red button. Okay. So could we play the countdown video, please? <laughs> okay, guys, have some fun and count with us. Please, hands Seven, here. Six. six. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and we are live at marketplace.streamer.com. Guys, please check out our pavilion space. It's near the registration. We have robots. Find us on Twitter and Telegram. Thank you all for having us.